guys, Kim here with another Canva tutorial. So it was about this time last year when I filmed a Canva tutorial on how to create infographics and you guys absolutely loved it. So I thought this was a perfect time to shoot another one since Canva has since released a phenomenal infographics template. So let's dig in. I'm going to go ahead and select the infographic template inside of Canva. And as you can see, there are tons of the beautiful templates that are 100% free on Canva. There's also some paid templates that are beautiful as well. And I mean, for the price, you just can't beat it. I believe some of these are $4, 3 to $4. So this is phenomenal. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and I'm going to select this second template to go through this tutorial with you guys. And this is actually really cool because I'm about to create this infographic for my blog post. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video that I shot about infographics, it's very important that you always have your facts laid out in a Google Doc. And that's exactly what I have right here on my Google document. It's basically a very condensed version of my blog post because this is not a very large infographic. So we have to make sure to condense it down as much as we can. So the title of my infographic is how to build a Facebook following from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and copy that into this cool design. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually break this down a little bit and delete probably this one. All right. And make this much smaller. Great. Now I really like what they're going on here. With this text, so I might use that for later. I'm definitely not going to use this one. And I think I might just divide this. So I'm going to copy this, use this text box. Great. From scratch. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just to see how it looks. Okay. That's better. Great. I'm going to move this down where it's a little bit more and make it a little bigger. Perfect. So this is nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and use this for the second. I guess subheading of my infographic. Beautiful. And that gives me a little bit more space. Now you might not like this. That's totally cool, but I am going away with what my taste is. I'm going to go ahead and also customize the colors with my brand colors. I always keep these handy in a specific little sticky note on my desktop. So when it's time to create designs, it's very easy for me to do so using my little color codes. I'm going to make this purple a little darker. This looks good. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of the bottom boxes and I'm going to bring those upwards. You can do this by selecting the outside of your design. Again, you know how I noticed how you notice that I clicked outside, drug that specific cursor all the way down to where the elements are that I want to choose. And if there's an element that you don't want to select, you can go ahead and click shift and unclick that and it will immediately unselect it. So now if I move things, they will move um, only the selected ones. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. But I just wanted to show you that real quick because a lot of people ask me about this and it's a great feature. It saves a lot of time. Okay, so the first fact that I'm going to start with, or the first uh, little information piece, is staying consistent. Now this needs to be a heading on my infographic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, basically I'm going to change the layout, and the layout, sorry, and I'm going to go ahead and do, this is going to be my heading on this side, and then the explanation is going to be on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and say, you know, staying consistent, important. So I'm going to make it bigger, not that big. Okay, this is good. And I'm going to change the text spacing. So you're getting an idea of how this works. I mean, it's very simple to do. All you have to do really is customize it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the specific icon and look for something that symbolizes, symbolizes staying consistent a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the search and I'm going to click on icons and see what I can find about staying consistent. Um, let's see over here. 
I think I like this check mark. This is actually cool. Like, you know, getting things done, like getting tasks, a task done. I resize it and bring it up here. Make sure that I am centering it with the design that's next to it so I can get an idea of what the positioning is. Also change the color to match the design. This looks really good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of this text block. Beautiful, I really like that. This is really cool. I like how it's coming along. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on my subheading. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through the entire infographic uh, for you. Sorry, this is a different design. Okay, but I just wanted you to see the first step. A couple of sections so you can see how I kind of uh, work through this. And this is a lot of text, so I'm gonna make this, um, can make it bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pull this line a little bit lower so it doesn't look so heavy. Okay, that's better. So um, again, I'm going to remove this icon and try to find something that suits it a little bit better. And it's, you know, talking about picking or selecting a strategy and sticking to it. So I'm just going to use this little um, this little uh, dot graph put it over here oh I like this color this kind of makes it pop a little bit so I might change all of the icons to this color or I might leave it like it is for now I'm just gonna leave it like it is but you get the general gist of you know really uh, customizing a cool infographic and making it your own don't be afraid to play with all of the elements inside the infographic make it fit you know whatever it is that you are are trying to design. So my very last tip for you is use those uh, graph lines. They're so helpful. So whenever you move something, you see how those dotted lines show up. This is so useful when you're creating infographics and you're trying to make sure the text is centered, not just um, with the text uh, box above, but also the one next to it. So check out how this works. See how I immediately, as soon as I am in the right place, Canva lets me know by showing those three dotted lines, the one in the top, the bottom, and the middle. That's how I know that my text is perfectly aligned. Very important for creating infographics. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this short, very quick tutorial. It's basically an updated version of the previous one. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you stay in the loop when new videos are published. And definitely leave me a comment below. I want to know what your questions are, what you would like to learn about creating infographics on Canva, and also more video suggestions. So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time on the next Kim TV episode. Bye!